Hey guys, welcome to our new series, Australian Skies, Your Story. We get a lot of people writing through with their sightings or experiences, and it's very hard with documentaries as they are time consuming and expensive to make. And with travel restrictions now, look, they're almost impossible. The one thing we have learnt along the way, however, is that there seems to be a real importance for people who have had these types of experiences to have them recorded and showcased and shared in a meaningful way. And I mean more than just a Facebook post. I mean, there seems to be something to do with intention in this whole experience that often gets overlooked. And yet, what we have found more often than not is that when a person's story does get shared in a meaningful or an intentional way, it can often unlock resolution or like the next level for them into this whole process. So hence, here's the series, and we're gonna read out your story and see what happens. Now, our first story comes from May, and she writes, my first sighting is going back to 2003. At the time, I was married and my son was just over a year old. We were traveling by car to Adelaide from Melbourne to visit my ex-husband's uncle. On the way back home, we left very early in the morning, just after 4 a.m. I put my son in his baby seat and I sat in the back with him while my ex was driving. We we're on the M1 coming on to the A8 heading towards Melbourne. And I'm not sure where exactly we were. It was not completely dark, just a little bit of light as the sun was about to rise. And suddenly my ex slammed on the brakes in the middle of the highway. If there'd been a car or a truck behind us, we would have had a serious accident. I literally jerked my head forward and almost hitting the front passenger headrest, I turned to my baby son, who was thankfully still asleep and okay. I yelled at my ex, asking him what the hell he was doing, and he was looking up through the front windscreen, observing something. All he said to me was, it's going to crash on the car. I thought he'd gone nuts. But as I looked out my passenger window, that's when I witnessed three large spheres of orange pink lights hovering in the dawn sky. I was completely speechless. It or they moved freely, not, not like a plane or a helicopter. It's hard to explain, almost like going with the air or the energy of the sky. And just as my ex and I witnessed it, the spheres of light moved away from us. My ex revved the car and tried to catch up but the spheres of light were now following each other in a line and then moved into a triangle form and then zoomed out of, out of sight as if they were sucked out of the sky. My ex was going about 120 kilometers an hour by now and I told him to slow down. We didn't know what to say to each other, uh, but we both knew it was not anything we'd ever seen before. That is such a classic sort of sighting, isn't it? And I can only imagine it would have been so much more compounded with, with fear because you had your young son in the car with you. And that's the one question I would have for you is, were you afraid at the time? Did you get any sense of anything at all? Any feeling from these lights? Or were you afraid? Uh, were you excited? Was there anything? Uh, the other things are sounds, was there anything you could hear unusual, uh, any other sort of atmospheric sort of indicators that you uh, remember. But yeah, having said that, uh, I would also be interested to know about your ex and uh, if you're still in contact with him, if you still talk about it and if he's had any thoughts about that experience. Uh, given that it happened in 2003. Now, May actually goes on to a second part of her story, and I'll continue. My second sighting was in October 2018. I used to live in Noble Park North in Victoria. I was in the kitchen one evening with my daughter, who was 10 years old at the time. It would have been around 7 p.m. I was cutting up vegetables at the kitchen bench, and my daughter was talking to me. I was listening to her, but then I had this urge to go outside to the backyard. I put my knife down and I told my daughter I needed to go outside. I went out the back door and looked up at the evening sky and I felt this buzzing feeling inside me. And in the sky coming towards me was a sphere of orange pink light. 
It was slowly coming down towards me and it stopped. And I'm not sure how far away it was in the sky. The size of it was about the size of a soccer ball. It was moving once again, like it did in 2003, freely in the sky, like a pulsating move. I was actually able to see inside the sphere and it was just energy moving around. Like when you go squid fishing and you pull a squid up from the sea and its body changes colour and you can see it moving around under the skin. I stood there for at least two, three minutes observing it. I moved around to see if it was a drone, but drones make noises. This sphere was absolutely silent. The only noise I could hear was a faint traffic on the freeway next to my house. I knew and I felt inside of me this sphere was something out of this world. It was just there in the sky, presenting itself to me. I was fixated. I could not take my eyes off it. The sphere slowly backed away and headed across the freeway and just vanished into thin air. I heard no noises as it flew off into the sky and vanished. There's, yeah, wow, there's a couple of things I'd like to go into here. And I mean, the first one is uh, the spheres themselves. Could this sphere at all, this sighting, be related to the first sighting you had back in 2003? The spheres themselves sound very similar at least in colour. You actually mentioned as well that the movement was very similar as well. The question I have, were you, was it familiar to you? Did you get any sense of familiarity? Uh, the other thing that I found interesting was the urge to go outside. That's interesting. That's something that we've obviously heard a lot of before and seems to be very much a key component to these sorts of sightings. The one thing that did stand out for me was the buzzing you felt inside. That's something that we don't really, um, we don't hear much of. I mean, it's all about the feeling, but you had a buzzing, like a resonating, and that's an interesting detail that I thought I would bring up. Uh, the other thing, I really loved your description about the insides, being able to see inside this sphere. Um, I love the description uh, that you drew up with the, the squid fishing. Now, May just finishes off her letter to us with this final uh, paragraph. Look, I've only told three people about my sphere experiences, my new partner, my girlfriend and my cousin. I've tried to search for answers but have found little information. On Facebook, there are a few UFO groups but find it hard to write and tell my story without someone making rude comments, etc. I've always thought of UFOs as metallic in colour, um, not spheres of light. These spheres, however, are intelligent, uh, not man-made or controlled. You can feel and see that it's intelligent. I can't explain how I needed to go outside and observe them, but what has that power over someone's mind? I don't get it or understand it. I'm not afraid of these spheres. It's not malicious in nature, but I don't know where it's from. And we humans know and feel things within us, if it's good or bad. And this I can't explain, but I had a buzzing sensation inside me when I saw it and I just don't know what it is. Look, thank you, May, for sending your story through and hopefully something comes of it for you and keep us updated. If anything changes, we'd love to hear back from you. And look, guys, if you would like to share your own story with us, you can do so by emailing us at ozguys247 at gmail.com. And thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.